Good evening. I'm Sarah McCleskey, Head of Resource and Collection Services in the University Library and Chapter Secretary at Hofstra. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the Spring 2020 Hofstra Phi Beta Kappa induction ceremony. We welcome our honored guests, our chapter members, our new inductees, their families and friends. Dr. Scott Harshberger, Harshbarger, Associate Professor of English and President of the Hofstra Chapter will now present the newly elected inductees. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow members of Phi Beta Kappa, honored guests, we meet here today to receive into our society those who, having qualified for election, now wish to be admitted to its privileges and undertake its responsibilities. In a ceremony that harkens back to the time of the founding of our nation, we shall welcome them into an association with all those who have been members of Phi Beta Kappa in the past and into a lifelong relationship with the society today. As is customary on this occasion, the chapter historian will give a brief account of the history of the society. I give you Professor Siebold. Good evening. Tonight you are joining a very old and uniquely American organization. Our nation and Phi Beta Kappa were both born in 1776 the United States of America on July 4th, and Phi Beta Kappa just a few months later on December 5th. In the midst of chaos, disorder, and revolution, five students at the College of William and Mary met at the Raleigh Tavern in Williamsburg, Virginia, to establish a secret society dedicated to examining the problems of a young democracy. Subjects debated in the late 1770s include, should a free society have an established religion? Does the existence of slavery contradict the idea of a republic? What freedoms are necessary for citizens of a de democratic society? William Short, the society's first president at William and Mary wrote, Phi Beta Kappa was to solidify that comprehensive idea, America. In the winter of 1781, on the cusp of the Battle of Yorktown, the College of William and Mary closed. This closure might have ended Phi Beta Kappa if not for the non-Virginian member, Alicia Parmel, who had helped to create chapters at Yale in 1780 and Harvard in 1781, ensuring the continuation of the society. Over the next century, Phi Beta Kappa added 25 chapters across the country, spreading from the East to the West at public universities and private colleges, knitting the best minds of a growing nation into a society of American scholars as Ralph Waldo Emerson put it in his 1837 Phi Beta Kappa address at Harvard University. In 1877, at the University of Vermont, George Washington Henderson, who had been born into slavery, became the first African-American member of Phi Beta Kappa. The first female members were inducted at the University of Vermont in 1875 and Wesleyan University in 1876. And in 1899, Middlebury College elected the first African-American woman, Mary Annette Anderson, to membership. In 1973, Hofstra faculty members led by Helene Wasek of Comparative Literature and Paul Harper of Political Science were granted a charter to form a chapter here at Hofstra. 47 years later, we are one of fewer than 300 chapters in the nation. Only 10% of US colleges and universities have Phi Beta Kappa chapters. These chapters select the top 10% of their arts and sciences graduates to join Phi Beta Kappa, making Phi Beta Kappa membership one of the most prestigious honors a student can receive. And so it is into this society with its long and illustrious history and with its strong ties to the founding of America that we welcome you tonight. Four of the founding members at the College of William and Mary went on to important roles in the fledgling United States of America, two as representatives of Congress and two as Supreme Court justices. Authors Nathaniel Hawthorne, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and Mark Twain were also Phi Beta Kappans. 
Presidents John Quincy Adams, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Bill Clinton were members, as were civil rights leaders W.E.B. Du Bois and Gloria Steinem, and poets laureate Robert Penn Warren and Rita Dove. Contemporary Phi Beta captains include Chief Justice of the Supreme Court John Roberts and Justices Elena Kagan, Sonia Sotomayor, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, author ta Coates, Jeff Bezos, founder and CEO of Amazon, and finally, our own Hofstra graduate, film director, Francis Ford Coppola. And so tonight, you, we, and they join hands in mutual purpose in dedication to intellectual excellence and to personal integrity. We welcome each and every one of you to Phi Beta Kappa. Congratulations. Will the candidates for membership, wherever you are, please rise. In accordance with the rules of this chapter and in consequence of our good opinion of your intellectual and moral character, supported by your record of high attainment at this institution, you have been submitted to the scrutiny of the constitu constitutional electors of this chapter and have met with their approval. You have been formally notified of your election and by your presence signify your desire to be enrolled as members of this ancient and honorable society. Therefore, I now inquire, do you solemnly promise that you will be true and faithful to Phi Beta Kappa, uphold its standards, obey its laws, and seek to reflect credit upon your affiliation with this venerable fellowship of learners? You may be seated. I'll now return the virtual podium over to Se Secretary McCleskey, who will introduce our guest speaker. Frederick M. Lawrence is the 10th Secretary and CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. He is a distinguished lecturer at the Georgetown Law Center and has previously served as president of Brandeis University, dean of the George Washington University Law School, and visiting professor and senior research scholar at Yale Law School. Fred Lawrence's legal career was distinguished by service as an assistant US attorney for the Southern District of New York in the 1980s, where he became chief of the civil rights unit. He received a bachelor's degree in 1977 from Williams College, where he was elected to Phi Beta Kappa, and a law degree in 1980 from Yale Law School, where he was an editor of the Yale Law Journal. On a more personal note, Fred grew up in Port Washington on Long Island, just a few miles north from Hofstra. I am honored to welcome Fred Lawrence virtually to our annual induction ceremony. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure and privilege to be with you. As uh, Sarah just said, if this were being done in person, um, then I would have the joy of telling you that I grew up about a 20 minute drive, or in my case as a kid, about a 45 minute bike ride uh, from Hofstra University. But for obvious reasons, we're not gathered together personally, we're gathered together virtually. These are, to say the very least, extraordinarily challenging times. When times are challenging like these, it's a good thing to look into our past, into our roots for strength. And you heard the story of the founding of Phi Beta Kappa. I wanna go back into that story just a little bit. Um, it may have surprised you that we were founded in a tavern. Uh, maybe, maybe it doesn't surprise you. Um, let me share with you the insights of the historian Stephen Johnson in a book called Wonderland. Um, Professor Johnson said, it is difficult to find a single momentous event in the decades leading up to the Revolutionary War that did not unfold in part in the semi-public confines of a tavern. Well, why does he say that? Because a tavern was a place where you could gather outside of the pioneers of the crown and you could think about radical ideas, revolutionary ideas, and make no mistake about it. Those founders were talking about a radical idea, a revolutionary idea. And you know, it's easy 
with the distant past to think of them as people from some other time, some other world. They had ruffled collars and they drank port and they said things like, here, here. I think that's a terrible mistake. Uh, they were young people just like you, living in a time of great uncertainty, just like yours, and not at all sure how it was all going to come out. And in that moment, they committed themselves to the most astonishing thing from which we get our name. The name Phi Beta Kappa uh, stands as the Greek initials for the motto, Philosophia Bio Kubernetes, which we usually translate as love of learning is the guide of life, but I'd like to suggest a slightly different translation. Kubernetes, from which we get the English word governor, uh, actually in classical Greek has a marine connotation. So maybe a slightly better translation would be the love of learning is the pilot of life. And you see there's a subtle but a significant difference between a pilot and a guide. A guide takes you along a path that already exists, but the pilot steers you out into the waters where there is no path. And sometimes those waters are choppy as they were in 1776 and as they most certainly are today in our time. And what John Heath and his four colleagues committed themselves to that night that still inspires us is that when those waters are choppy, when those times are uncertain like ours, it is no dogma, no monarchy. It is the love of learning that we commit will be the pilot of our lives. Now, by dint of the fact that you are joined here virtually, you understand this. You have not only taken on a highly demanding program of a liberal arts education at Hofstra, but you have performed at the highest level. So you understand the liberal arts education prepares us for a meaningful life, a productive life, and an engaged life. Let me just say a word or two about each of those. A meaningful life, it seems to me, we feel this even more now when we ask questions about what does it mean to live in a good society? What does it mean to live a good life? We're not asking those questions alone. We're asking them with Plato and with Aristotle. We're asking them with Kant and with Mill. And when we are in quarantine, we are not quarantined alone if we've been liberally educated because those great figures are with us always if we'll reach out to them. The great literary critic, Harold Bloom, once said, we read imaginative fiction because we can't know enough other people. So when I'm here in my home with my family in Washington, DC quarantined, it's not just us. I'm here with the people I meet through Herman Melville and Henry James, Emily Dickinson, George Eliot, James Baldwin and Toni Morrison. They open remarkable worlds to us. They are the cures to the real loneliness that we face in our time to keep our minds open and the others we can meet Liberal education also prepares us for a productive life. And you know very well that what will be needed in the coming days and years in a very challenging economy are flexible thinkers, creative thinkers, problem solvers, and people who can adapt. And that's what you've learned from your liberal education. And liberal education prepares us to live engaged lives as members of our communities, local, national, even international. Phi Beta Kappa in the last month has been very involved in the legislation of the coronavirus stimulus package, making sure that the interests of the arts and the humanities and of higher education were represented. You are part of a society that cares about those values deeply and will play a role in that. So what started with five members in one society has grown into a society of 500,000 members and 290 chapters and nearly 50 alumni associations all around the world. Yes, it's true that our members include 17 presidents, 41 Supreme Court justices, over 140 Nobel laureates, but I must tell you those are not the people I'm thinking of tonight. Our members also include countless numbers of frontline workers, caregivers, researchers, who will search until we find a cure for this scourge and plague of our time. The policymakers wrestling with the serious challenges of equity and inclusion that plague us as well in our time. They are also members of Phi Beta Kappa and you join them tonight. Wherever you wind up settling in the coming days and in the coming years, there will be a Phi Beta Kappa community. I urge you to get involved and to connect with your fellow members. Go to pbk.org and you'll learn about a program called Key Connections that starts in the fall every year, connecting members 
who are new with members who've been here for a long time. I think there has never been a time where this kind of connectivity, both personally and professionally, is going to be important. Networking opportunities for you as you build your careers, and also networking opportunities as you build your lives, as you leave Hostra and move into the world. So, you know, I've been thinking a lot about John Heath and the four others who started Phi Beta Kappa 244 years ago, and what they would have thought about the time that we're living in, what they would have thought about a virtual induction ceremony. What would they have made of this? I think I know what they would have said to you all, and they're my final words of congratulations as well. They would have said, welcome to Phi Beta Kappa. The work before us is enormous and challenging, and you have arrived just in time. Welcome to the Phi Beta Kappa family. Fred, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Benjamin Rifkin, Dean of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and Professor of Russian. Ben, on behalf of our chapter, I extend deepest thanks for all your support, particularly in this unusual year. I am honored to welcome you to bring greetings to our new members, their friends and families. Before I start my remarks, I want to explain that I'm reading them from the screen. So if you see my eyes moving from right to left, um, uh, that's what's going on. Phi Beta Kappa. Wow. I know that as Dean of Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I'm expected to be far more articulate than just wow. And still, wow. We savor this moment. Here you are, many of you on the eve of your graduation, some of you about to finish your junior year, being recognized for extraordinary success, not only in your academic program, but also in your accomplishments in the community. So let's savor this. Let's also recognize that in a more perfect world, we'd be celebrating this occasion in person. I know that the 10th floor of Axon Library is not the most glamorous space in the world, but it would be wonderful to be able to be there together right now. The global pandemic had other plans for us, so my hope for tonight's gathering is that it will provide just as much recognition for all of you, our inductees, and your accomplishments as an in-person event. You've been chosen among your many peers for membership in a society founded in the year of the writing of the Declaration of Independence, that imperfect document laying out the vision for a just society we continue to aspire toward. You've already heard about the history of the founding of Phi Beta Kappa and its dedication to the very same ideals of free inquiry that led the framers of our republic to question government by hereditary monarchy. By accepting this invitation to join Phi Beta Kappa, you are taking an oath to respect and protect free inquiry, both in society and in the larger culture. Had I given this talk 15 or 20 years ago, I might not have thought that this was such a serious promise. However, in our day, sadly, free inquiry is truly imperiled. Our constitution continues to free, protect free speech, but our nation seems to have no commitment to protect the right of speech that is not paid for. Our nation's discourse has degraded as the American people have retreated into more and more isolated communities including physically gated communities, intellectually gated communities, and virtually gated communities. Indeed, the advent of new technologies has surely accelerated a new kind of segregation. Of course, we're familiar with persistent patterns of segregation by race and class, both here on Long Island and beyond. But a new kind of segregation, ideological segregation, has become more and more apparent in our society. In our neighborhoods, workplaces, and houses of worship, we tend to participate only in communities of people who think as we think, listen to the political commentators to whom we listen, and vote as we vote. We are ceasing to listen to one another more broadly. We are losing the possibility of finding common ground to address the issues critical for peace and prosperity in our own country and abroad. Families are splintering. 
marriages, relationships, and friendships are dissolving over political differences. Pundits and politicians argue, actually they don't argue, they shout at one another. And then we are surprised when citizens do the same thing. Public celebrities use the language of violence, and then we are surprised when a madman shoots people in yet another public space. Rather than relying on sound data, our political leaders tend to make decisions based on sound bites. Here at Hofstra on our beautiful Arboretum campus, we have taught you to look for data, to analyze them, and to draw conclusions based on them. You may have been analyzing a poem or the wings of a fruit fly, a bill under discussion in the New York State Assembly or in Congress, a painting by Jackson Pollock, responses by rats, some drunk, some sober, to different kinds of stimuli, harmonies in, the work, in a work by Stravinsky, arguments of Nietzsche and Kant and the sacred texts of Muslims and Hindus and Sikhs. Regardless of the text, we've taught you to look at the data, to analyze them, to draw conclusions, and to shape your arguments based on those data. As you go forward from this day on, I hope you will continue to make decisions based on data and to use your talents to shape a discourse that can help others understand the issues you're studying, the issues that matter to you, whether they are questions of governmental policy, medical care, business, or the creation of performance of a work of art or any one of a million spheres of activity that awaits each one of you. I ask you all to think about the roles you will play as members of Phi Beta Kappa in helping people in your communities listen to one another, to consider multiple perspectives, and to arrive at solutions to problems that can bring people together in a way that builds a brighter future inclusively for everyone. As members of Phi Beta Kappa, I urge you to be role models of thoughtful citizens open to different perspectives on the issues that challenge our society. When you hear impatience, I ask you to model patience. When you hear intolerance, model tolerance. When you hear disrespect, model respect. If someone you hear criticizes a political leader for their appearance, religion, disability, gender identity, or sexual orientation, or some other feature of their identity, whether local, regional, national, or international, regardless of political party or race, you can shift the focus of the discourse from the person to the policy. Ask those around you to consider different points of view and look for different points of view in your own life. Move outside the zone of your personal comfort to talk with people from diverse backgrounds with diverse points of view. If you think of yourself as a liberal, challenge yourself by reading the Wall Street Journal. If you think of yourself as a conservative, try watching Rachel Maddow. Of course, everyone should learn Russian and read the Russian media online. Did I mention I'm a professor of Russian? By challenging yourself in these news ways, you will ultimately arrive at sounder conclusions and more compelling arguments. And in this way, you will be able to contribute to shaping the future rather than being shaped by it. And this is critically important because, and you may not want to hear what I'm going to say now, but it's true. This is critically important because you are America's elite. You're our nation's hope. From among you in the ranks of Phi Beta Kappa will come researchers who will cure diseases. And doesn't that sound important right now? Business leaders who will employ hundreds if not thousands of people political leaders who will make changes to make the world a more just and peaceful place, composers and musicians and poets, uh, poets and artists and actors and filmmakers and dancers and choreographers who will move us, delight us and fill us with the joy of life. So today I issue you this challenge. Be present, be here now, wherever you are, be there and be mindful of where you are and who's there with you. Truly see the world around you and don't take it for granted. Don't live your life tethered to an internet-based community, particularly important words for a celebration conducted online, while you ignore the very real community in which you make your home. Be mindful of the future because if you don't, you will be shaped by it. 
Live life fully and meaningfully. Make a difference in your life and in the lives of others. You have demonstrated here in this place, in this time at Hofstra that you are exceptionally talented. You have demonstrated leadership and moral strength. Don't squander these riches, use them. Use them every day to make the world a better place. I'd like to share with you now a personal story. One of my grandfathers, Grandpa Menasha, immigrated to the United States from Poland in the spring of 1939. My family is Jewish, so the timing could not have been more important. One day when I was home on spring break from college, he approached me as I sat on our living room couch reading a Russian novel. He asked me if I thought we were similar. I looked at this old man, an Orthodox Jew with an East European accent, who was so kosher he wouldn't eat off the plates in our kosher house. And I told him I thought we were very different. He disagreed. He told me, we are the same. We were just born in different places and different times. Had you been born in Poland when I was, you'd be sitting in the same position reading a book. It would just be a different book. It took me a long time to realize that he was right. I am just like him. I shared this particular story with you now for you to reflect on your life's journey, how you might be different and yet the same as people who have given you roots and wings roots to keep you grounded and wings to help you soar to new heights. Let's be clear, your outstanding achievements, the achievements that led you to the ceremony tonight were possible only with the help of the people who gave you roots and wings, your loved ones and your friends. So after tonight's ceremony, please be sure to give a real or virtual hug to all of them. May the roots you have sunk deep keep you grounded. May the wings you have grown here at Hofstra help you soar to the greatest heights. May you always be mindful of your responsibilities as a member of Phi Beta Kappa. As Dean of Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I congratulate each of you on your many achievements and accomplishments. And I remind you that much is expected of you. This is a day when we celebrate your achievements, but it's also a day when you take an oath, as you've heard. With this recognition of your academic talent and self-discipline comes an expectation of the contributions you will make to your communities as you go through life as a Phi Beta Kappan. As Phi Beta Kappans, you bear the honor bestowed upon you tonight and you are obligated by the responsibilities that I've outlined for you and that you will promise to take upon yourself when you take the oath. You make us all very proud we all know that there are many more achievements in store for each of you. So please keep us posted on your future successes so that we can continue to feel the warmth we're enjoying with you tonight. Congratulations to all the 2020 inductees in the Hofstra University chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Go Pride. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the lutenist of Hofstra University, Dr. Christopher Morangello. Christopher Morangello, a former British Marshall Scholar and overseas research scholar, is a musicologist, performer, teacher, luthier, impresario, and director who specializes, as, who specializes in early music. He is a graduate of the Mann's College of Music, the Royal College of Music, and the University of Oxford, where he earned his doctorate in historical musicology. Dr. Morangello, is the artistic director of the Long Island Early Music Festival at the Cathedral of the Incarnation in Garden City, New York. This annual festival has engaged and inspired the community with concerts given by leading and emerging artists in the field of historically informed performance. The festival is now in its fourth season. Dr. Morangello is also director of the Hofstra Collegium Musicum, which performs musically and dramatically compelling concerts of early music each year as part of the Hofstra Shakespeare Festival. These concerts, which include acting, staging, costume, props, oratory, historical dance, and period gestures, are becoming more and more like music dramas. Dr. Morangello calls them early musicals. And with no further ado, Dr. Morangello. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Chris, that was beautiful. We will now turn to the induction of honorary members. The model chapter of Phi Beta Kappa states, men and women, not graduates of the institution, who by contributions in the field of humane sciences and letters, or by works of pure literature, have given clear evidence of the possession of distinguished scholarly capacities may be elected to honorary membership. The Hofstra chapter has elected two extraordinary candidates for honorary membership this year. Associate Professor of Political Science, Rosanna Parati, and Dean of HCLAS, Benjamin Rifkin. Dr. Parati attended Point Park College, which did not have a Phi Beta Kappa. In endorsing Professor Parati for membership, her colleague and Hofstra Phi Beta Kappa member, Mina Bowes, writes, Rosanna Parati is an excellent candidate for honorary membership in Hofstra's Phi Beta Kappa chapter. For more than 25 years, Rosanna has dedicated herself to teaching, service, and advancing the systematic study of American politics. In recent years, she has been instrumental in teaching and advising students in the Legal Education Acceleration Program. She also has created new courses in, in immigration politics and careers in the liberal arts, both of which have high student interest and participation. In every aspect of her work, Rosanna represents the excellence that defines Phi Beta Kappa. She is a model educator for students 
and colleagues alike. It is a pleasure to recommend her. Dr. Benjamin Rifkin's teaching and research interests lie in foreign language education, applied linguistics, second language acquisition, and contemporary Russian film. Dean Rifkin attended Yale as an undergraduate, and thus our chapter sought permission from that chapter to invite him to membership. We received approval from Alpha Chapter of Connecticut from, Secretor from Secretary George Levesque, Associate Dean of Yale College and Dean of Academic Programs. Dean Levesque writes, our chapter formally grants your request to elect Benjamin Rifkin, Yale College Class of 1983, to the Phi Beta Kappa Society as an honorary member. Dean Rifkin's distinguished career of academic scholarship and leadership clearly demonstrates the highest ideals of our society, and we are delighted that you have decided to, best to bestow upon him this well-deserved honor. Please extend to him our warmest congratulations and best wishes. Now, while this honor is strictly limited by the society, you have been elected by this chapter for the distinction because you have fully satisfied the conditions of membership. Having heard the pledge undertaken by the members in course, do you also accept the rights and obligations of membership in Phi Beta Kappa? I do. Thank you. Will all initiates again please rise? Each of you has now affirmed your loyalty to Phi Beta Kappa and pledged to uphold its standards. We welcome you to the ranks of membership. Sarah McCleskey will now present a slideshow of our new members. You may be seated. Pleased to present the 2020 class, Popstra Phi Beta Kappa, Dr. Rosanna Parati, Associate Professor of Political Science. Dr. Benjamin Rifkin, Dean of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and Professor of Russian. I wanted to show you the certificate you'll be receiving and the honor cords will indicate that you are a member of our society. You can wear these honor cords with your academic regalia. Our members in course, Andrea Rizzle Bilton, a journalism major with minors in creative writing and public relations. Michael Callahan, political science, the minor in Spanish. Paul J. Camoli, English. Juliana Carson, Speech Language Hearing Sciences. Erin Melissa Cauley, Anthropology and Criminology with minors in European Studies and Spanish. Luis Mateo Chavez, Engineering Science. Alina Clark, Anthropology and Global Studies with minors in Chinese and Geography. Deandra Alexis Denton, Public Policy and Public Service and Sociology. Megan Donovan, Drama and English. Sarah Dowd, Anthropology and Geography the minor in sociology. Julia E. Drubal, speech language hearing sciences, the minor in Spanish. Megan Duba, English, the minor in history. Maria Cristina Fonseca Gonzalez, psychology. Rina Fukuda, Engineering Science. Cecilia Laurel Gibbons, Psychology with a minor in Creative Writing. 
Jillian Elizabeth Green, music business with a minor in marketing. Nicholas Mark Gorino, a philosophy major with minors in history and civic engagement. Brittany Morgan Hickey, psychology. Marina Jacobo, mathematics with minors in music and physics. Sophia Juma, speech language hearing sciences with a minor in Spanish. Thank you, Eric Kang, pre-medical studies. Landry Shea Kennedy, criminology and linguistics. Caitlin Koch, history, Latin American and Caribbean studies. Kirsten Kochi, English. Nathan Lackman, journalism with a minor in economics. Sibel Marie Laine, English and English education. Isabella Lang, fine arts and history with minor in Italian studies and Italian American studies. Allegra Laria, mathematics with minors in Italian, as well as Italian studies and Italian American studies. Rebecca Ann Lopresti, history with minors in drama and French. Catherine Kane McCarthy, public policy and public service and political science. Laura Masculo, Mathematical Business Economics with a minor in management. John Gregory McDonough, Political Science and History with minors in Computer Science and European Studies. Akash Mishra, Neuroscience with minors in Biochemistry and Biology. Catherine Morial, television production and studies with a minor in civic engagement. Martha Morton, English and television production and studies. Manmeet Coward Niger, criminology, public policy and public service with a minor in philosophy of law. Benedetta Palese, Economics and Political Science. Anna Sophia Passanen, Global Studies and Economics. Dijan Risto Peric Soto, Film Studies and Production and Political Science. Evan Perlis Montemayor, Music and Speech Language Hearing Sciences. Sasha Pezenek, History with Minors in Hebrew and Legal Studies in Business. Alexandra Radeba, Political Science and Global Studies with Minors in European Studies and International Affairs. Jenna Elizabeth Reda, English and Global Studies with a minor in Spanish. Amanda Romeo, Radio Production and Studies with a minor in Fine Arts. Arunima Roy, Film Studies and Production with a minor in Biochemistry. Jacqueline Sanger, Theater Arts. Eloise Marie Santos, Public Relations with a minor in French. Walton Raphael Schmidt, Mechanical Engineering. Claudia Steele, Pre-Help with a minor in Spanish. Nicholas Tavares, Geographic Information Systems 
and environmental resources with minors in geography and meteorology. Giovanna Thames, Italian and journalism. Irini Christina Sunakis, English and fine arts. Olivia Ying Tu, Global Studies and Geography, with a minor in Spanish. Casey Urban, Neuroscience, with minors in Psychology and Biochemistry. Alyssa Rose Vital, Psychology. Carrie Lauren Wetter, English with a minor in public relations. Alexandra Lauren Willens, history and psychology with a minor in cognitive science. Warm congratulations to all of you and we welcome you as new members of Hofstra's chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Our chapter is truly grateful for the support of the provost's office this year and for many years past. Representing the provost's office tonight is Dr. Margaret Abraham, Senior Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, Harry H. Wachtell, Professor and Professor of Sociology. The provost's office has generously provided the membership certificates and honor cords for each of our new members this evening. And if you haven't already received yours in the mail, you will receive them shortly. Dr. Abraham, please extend our chapter's gratitude to Provost Berliner and your entire office. I'm honored to welcome you this evening. Good evening. On behalf of the Provost's Office, Provost Belina, it is my pleasure to be here with you this evening. My congratulations to all the new members. It is an honor to present the Helene Wasik Award and the Phi Beta Kappa Graduate Scholarship. Helene Wasik was a professor of classics and was instrumental in the founding of Hofstra's Phi Beta Kappa chapter in 1973. Each year, the Hofstra chapter bestows a Helene Wasik Award and a $100 gift card from the university bookstore upon a student who has excelled in the study of classics and related areas. This year's award is presented to Walton Raphael Smith. Walton is an honors college student majoring in mechanical engineering. Walton completed Latin through level four in the advanced placement program. At Hofstra, he completed a number of courses in Italian language, literature, and, and culture. Congratulations, Walton. Each year, uh, this is for the Phi Beta Kappa Graduate Scholarship. Each year, the Hofstra chapter awards a scholarship of 500 to support graduate study in the liberal arts and sciences. This year's award is presented to Deandra Denton, an honors college student who will pursue a law degree in fall 2020. In her scholarship application, Deandra wrote, my academic studies in both sociology and public policy and public service have allowed me to value a multidimensional society. I have learned that sociology teaches us to center on the past, present and future in order to enrich the growth of society. In my public policy and public service studies, I have acquired uh, an understanding of critical context, how critical context is to developing, implementing and evaluating policies that address local and global um, issues. As a resident of the village of Hempstead, I recognize 
As a, village, uh, uh, as a resident of the village of Hempstead, I recognize the power of continued economic and community development and was inspired to place Hempstead as a focal point of my research for my senior thesis. I analyzed the linkage between units of local government and the village's fiscal health requiring me to engage with state, county and village officials on their thoughts on viable policy tools as the village of Hempstead seeks to begin its revitalization process, which in turn will bolster, bolster the physical health of the community. Overall, my education in liberal arts and sciences has further developed my critical thinking skills and requires me to be actively engaged. It is with the power of active engagement and critical thinking that I am eager to approach my legal studies in Korean pol in policy to impact local and global change. Congratulations, Deandra. Thank you, Maggie. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the Provost's Office, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Honors College, faculty and staff for providing the challenging and nurturing environment in which our new members have so clearly thrived. I'd also like to thank my fellow officers and evaluators, Dan Siebold, Lisa Dresner, Mary Carmel Etienne, Doran Milstein, our technical director and former president, Courtney Selby, Francis Rizzo from University Relations, and especially Sarah McCleskey, who moved heaven and earth to make this event happen. Thank you all. Thank you, Sarah. Now, I'm from the English department, and you know what that means. You're not getting away without a little poetry, befitting the occasion, but also the strange state of the world in which we Zoom. This is the last stanza of W.H. Auden's September 1st, 1939. Under the night, our world in stupor lies. Yet, dotted everywhere, ironic points of light flash out wherever the just exchange their messages. May I, composed like them, of eros and of dust, beleaguered by the same negation and despair, show an affirming flame. So flame on, Phi Beta Kappans. The world needs you. Thank you again, and congratulations. Thank you.